Hi Floss Tube, it is Helen D. Today is Tuesday, October 18th, and I could tell it was Floss Tube Day when I woke up at 5.30 this morning because it was pouring and dark. <laughs> and that seems to be par for the course lately. So I did my best with the lighting. Colors may not be exactly true today. And I look extra pale which is saying something because I'm always pale. So today I'm extra pale and I got new glasses. So if you're like, she looks different and I can't figure out what it is. I got new glasses. I also got my hair cut and then I dyed it. So it's not as gray. <laughs> so that's nice. Um, yeah, I had my eye appointment a couple weeks ago and these came in. They actually look just like the ones I had before my last pair. <laughs> and I hated my last pair. I didn't like them when I picked them up. I didn't like them for two years. So this year, even though my eyes only changed a little, I'm like, you know what? I need new glasses. So I told them the last pair I got, I picked out in fall of 2020. And it was very hard to pick out glasses while you were wearing a mask because you couldn't see, you could see how the top part looked, but not how the bottom part looked. So new glasses. Um, welcome. Welcome to new subscribers. Welcome to returning subscribers. I have quite a bit to share or I'm just really messy. I can't tell which of the two that is because I feel a little cramped today. I have water for me. I have water for my co-host. If she decides to come down, uh, Emmy was asleep on the bed when I just started. So if I'm talking though, she might think that I'm doing something interesting and come down. It has been a busy couple of weeks. Uh, nothing nothing exciting, <laughs> just busy stuff. Uh, my husband is actually gone. He's in South Carolina visiting his mom. So it's been just me and the boy for a few days. I don't know, he left Friday. He's actually on the plane right now, headed back. Uh, it's the first time he's flown since December of 2019. It's the first time any of us have. We went to my sister-in-law's wedding and then I went to market in March of 2020 and then we haven't done anything. So. I think that was a little weird for him and to be traveling alone. Sometimes I go places by myself or with my stitchy friends, um, but he doesn't really travel alone. So that's different. So that means I had a little less time for stitching, but before he left, I had spent a lot of time in the crawfish doing some finishing. So I have finishes to show. I'm gonna shoot a little video of some finishes that I can't show just yet, but I wanna get on camera um, so we'll, that's all to come. I did friend stitch this past weekend. Uh, that was fantastic. So friend stitch is an online virtual retreat, but it's more of a, it's a zoom, but we're all muted. Cause there was like, you know, 200 of us. So you couldn't, that'd be crazy. Um, but they showed techniques and talked and it's Heart and Hand and Bent Creek. And it was great. I had a great time. I'm already looking forward to signing up next year. So I'll show you that stuff. Uh, Stitch New England. Information is out. So Stitch New England is a retreat being put on almost a year, just past a year from now. Uh, it's October 13th and 14th. It's an all day Friday and all day Saturday stitching retreat, like a 300 person, so a big one, uh, in Massachusetts. Mansfield, perhaps? It's being put on by Pam, who's stitching in the land of good enough, who runs Stitch New England, the shop, which is in um, North Andover. And she says it's like 10 minutes away. I'm not familiar with that area. <laughs> If Mansfield is in fact 10 minutes away from North Andover, then I remembered correctly. Um, Pam has put out a floss tube that goes over all the registration details, so I will link that below. She also has um, a page on her website with like everything written out. So I will link both of those below. Registration is starting in just a few weeks, but she's doing it kind of staggered. Um, so I will let her explain all that to you, but those links are below. I'm super excited. She's been talking about this for a while, so I'm excited that it's happening. The other thing before we launch into the new stuff, uh, in my last time I filmed, before I filmed my regular video, I filmed just a little video showing all of these Halloween things because I've gotten a lot of questions about them. 
and then promptly forgot to edit it in. <laughs> So I'm going to pause here and edit that in to kind of show off what's been behind me and then I will pop back on with all of the new stuff. I'm back and I'm going to show you, it's coming all apart. <laughs> I'm going to show you the Halloween things that I've had behind me because I've had a lot of questions about them um, because that's what you guys can see. So I thought we'd just, I think there's four, it was four or five things back there. So this was the first one that's been on the wall. This is by Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. I'm not sure, I don't remember what it's called. I, this is one of the first things I stitched when I got back into stitching. Uh, it's one of the first times I used a hand dyed fabric. I wish I'd written down what it was because I really like it. I know it's a picture of this plus, but it's like gray and brown. And I'm sure I used everything called for. I finished this as a wall hanging, one of my first ones. One of my stripes goes down, one of my stripes goes up. I wasn't taking it out. And this hanger, it hooks right off, piece of wood. This is from Ackfeld Wire, and I love it. It's a big old spider web. So it's a little bit bigger of a piece than it needs to be because I was gonna use that hanger. So there's that one. Next is another frosted pumpkin. This was Trick or Treat Costume Club. This was put out um, as a stitch along and it's on whatever the called for fabric was. They usually use Picture This Plus. I think this is Da Vinci. It's an opal Ada. I finished this one as um, a cube. I'm sure I had my husband cut two pieces and glued them, yeah right there. I glued them together. I put a little batting on both sides to cover um, the split. And I do have a tutorial for these cubes. They're, they're very, fairly easy to do. There's no sewing, so they're pretty easy to do. We'll show the next cube then. This is another big cube. This is Silver Creek Samplers, Scary Things October Brings. Uh, I had to switch out the green because the called for green didn't show in my fabric. I believe this fabric is Banshee Ada from Fabrics by Stephanie. It was a scrap I had from another piece. And so this one's finished as a big cube. And then on the top, this witch hat was from a headband, like one of those Halloween headbands. And actually the tool was on there too. So I just kind of laid the tool under and it's just, you can see the pins. They're not even pushed all the way down. I just pinned it in. So if I ever wanted to take it out, she pushed those pins down. I can just unpin it to take it out. So that's this one. This little one was a freebie that I released last year. I think I called it Ghosts and Goblins. This fabric is Monster Mash by Picture This Plus. This is an Ada. 14 count it looks like. And then the ghosts on the back. So this one, the chart is on my, uh, my website, if anyone's interested in that. And then I just put a little piece of ribbon and pom-pom trim. And then the last one that's been behind me is the one I've gotten the most questions on. This is, it's Hamson Design, A Year in Chalk. It's the October block, and I think it was just called Let Them Eat Candy. So this is on one of those This one originally I bought at Target years ago in the dollar spot and it is a chalkboard tombstone. But I've since done a lot of other finishes. After doing this one, um, you can buy these chalkboards. Um, they're usually in like the wedding section for like place numbers on tables for weddings. <laughs> um, someone said they found them in like the stationery section. So I just glued it on there, my magnet's on here so that I can pop it on and off, and this is on a magnet too. So this one is meant to be done on chalkboard fabric or black fabric, and I had seen someone, Java Girl Stitches maybe, flip it. So they did what would have been in white and black, and then orange, so it's black, and I think this is Colonial Copper, Classic Color Works. And I stitched it on, 
that fabric I can never remember the name of, Country French Cafe Mocha. So it's on a 16 count light tan Ada. So that is what has been behind me. And these, that's a Scary Apothecary by Hands On Design. I finished them like she has them in the charts and then I had found this welcome sign from Joann's. Again, years ago it sat in my closet for two years and then I finally used it. So I hang them from that. So that's what's been behind me this month. I have more Halloween stuff in the other room, but this is the stuff that you've kind of seen. Um, and I'll probably highlight some of my favorite fall finishes after the Halloween stuff is gone, because then I'll have to move some of that over here. <laughs> so there's that. Okay, so now I will jump into my regular stuff um, and we'll start with the FFOs, the fully finishes that I can show you, which is five things, uh, three of them, you may have already seen, I finished the Autumn Berries. And I did a video on the finishing. I'm gonna show them one at a time. First of all, this one is not, oops. This is the one that was not part of the Autumn Berries pack by Erica Michaels. This, I took an online class with her um, last year and this was the berry that we received. But because I finished the scarecrow from that set differently, I wanted a third berry, so I stitched this one up. Here's where that light's gonna be an issue. <laughs> so that's the topper of that one. This is the Autumn Leaves Abound. And I used, for all of these, I used wool from the packets that Karen with um, Ruby Mountain Dye Works put together. This one, the brown wool was in the spring pack, but the other wools were all in the fall pack. And then this one is pick up the patch and I did the top to look like, it's got layered buttons for like a pumpkin stem and like some little leaves, I guess. And then I stitched some long lines in to kind of try and make it look like the top of a pumpkin. So that tutorial is up if you're interested in seeing, I don't have anywhere to put these. They're now on the napkins. Don't wipe your face with them. If you come to my house, don't wipe your face on my berries. <laughs> um, the tutorial is up if you're interested in seeing how I put those toppers together. I have my fabric pulled for my winter berries, so I need to get stitching on those. They're not Christmas themed, they're winter themed. So I probably won't try and put them out and finish them until January. Um, and I wanted to mention, uh, Carla at Cobweb Corner had offered up at the beginning of the year, um, the code HDBERRY, which I'll link below. That is good on her website for any of the four, 10% off all four of the seasonal berry charts. So there's one spring, summer, autumn, and winter and that code will get you 10% off all of them. Um, and it's good till the end of the year. So if you haven't picked them up and you're interested in picking them up, that will save you a little cash. So that's the berries. Uh, this one, this is Give Thanks. This little chart, I did an order last year directly from her, um, hands on design and in the packet she had a little freebie and it was this one so that's where I got this it's not one of her like freebies on her website but that's where I got it so because it's so tiny I wanted to make it a little bigger so I added a couple fabrics and then this one I did chenille um, and I did record a tutorial because I know last time I showed one with chenille people were like ah so I did a tutorial um, I showed how to, I glued, I glued it, but I talked about sewing. I talked about team sew versus team glue. Honestly, I am team pom-pom. <laughs> I don't usually use chenille. Uh, it's not the look I'm going for, but I wanted to show you how to do it on this little one. So that I will probably post this weekend, maybe this weekend. So there's that one. I have all the ones that are hard to find this week because this one's hard to find too. This is Dressed for Dinner, and it's an old chart from Erica Michaels. Uh, I finished it as a stand-up. Um, 
I did it on a 25 count so that he'd be a little bigger. This is out of print. Um, and I actually reached out to Linda Stoltz and asked because I said, I know when I show it, people are gonna ask or people are gonna reach out to you. Um, so this is an out of print, it's, a, it's an older chart. It actually was charted all with Rainbow Gallery threads because I know she used to do a lot of charts with Rainbow Gallery and this might have been one of them. But I found mine on eBay, so keep an eye out on the secondary markets. And if you do find one and you're like, where'd you get your little charm? Um, I got a pack of clock charms <laughs> on Amazon. So now I have clock charms in every shape and size. <laughs> um, so he's all done. I think he's adorable. And then, was that it? No, I had one more. I had one more, but I buried it, but it's from French Stitch, so I'll show you with the French Stitch stuff. Um, fully, so that was how fully finishes. Finished things. One is a French Stitch thing, and then the other two are in here. I've been working on, last video I showed you, um, Autumn Petites and Thanksgiving Petites. This is a new set of charts by Little House Needleworks. And Alyssa at Starry Night Studio actually does the boards that you finish them on and sells them on her Etsy shop, which I'll link below. So I had said, you know, I want to get, get started on that. Alyssa sent me, she sent me the boards, so I want to have them done. <laughs> I knew that Autumn wouldn't get done in time, so I thought I'd start with Thanksgiving. And I have two of them done. I'm doing them on... 28 count. It calls for a 20. Um, it calls for a 32, but I'm doing mine on a 28. And I think it's mushroom Lugana. So I have blessed. And I have welcome. This one I made a mistake on. The table is shorter than it's called to be. You wouldn't even know. So I have two done, and then my fabric is cut for the next two. Um, I've been working on those at piano. They've been pretty easy to stitch because they're on a nice small Q-snap. But I had to pull them off my Q-snap to work on my friend's stitch piece. So there's that one. So then the other fully finish and FO both came from the French stitch box. So we'll skip whips for a minute and just jump into the front stitch so I can show you these things. So we got a box that we weren't allowed to open until the retreat. We opened it together, and I know like Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch has already shown it, and a few other people have talked about it. I think Pam and Steph did. I haven't watched their video yet. Um, we were given four projects. Uh, two of them were fully kitted, and some other goodies. It was great. <laughs> it was great. So one of the projects was a pre-stitch, which we then finished together like the uh, Mona Boast who's a finisher showed us how to do she showed us how to do a ruffled pinned ribbon um, I chose not to do that for mine so this was I think they called it a bird's Christmas I think so it's this one just a little one and then they gave us these boards I did mine just with um some cording just to keep it a little simpler and I have a hanger but I might just tuck it in a bowl and this is just hooked on there so I could take it off um, so this one is done these charts are not available and I I don't know if they will be available they might at some point become available to future friend stitch participants but I don't know. As of right now, they are only available through this box. Like, I can't get the ones from the past two that I didn't attend. I wish I could. <laughs> the other one that I have done was called uh, Friends Stitch Wreath. And it says Noel. This is the one that they had, the fabric and the floss in the kit. This is on a 25 count Lugana. I don't know what color. And then the floss, they gave us these um, Cottage Garden Thread Pearl Cottons. They were really nice to work with. They're fun how they come off the package. There's no plastic on the package, right? It's nice and you got your thread drop, you got, I know, the light. So these are a pearl cotton, so you only had to use one strand. So I actually finished stitching that mostly during the retreat. I finished it up that night. 
Let me turn my phone off because it's going to ding a thousand times. Um, I'm planning a pre-8th grade dance pizza shenanigans festival for Friday night, so I've got a lot of dings. <laughs> um, we got a finishing, like a finishing packet with a bunch of trims and some fabrics and the double-sided tape. Um, there was a sticker in there. These are fairy lights, like all these goodies. These two, so the last two are a little tiny one. Season's greetings. I love him, and I think he's going to fit on those tags for Michaels. And the final one, take this out so you can actually see it. This is called uh, Great Joy Glad Tides Gatherings, which was the name of the retreat, Great Joy. So this was the main piece. And it's a long one. Or it was designed so you could take all of those little sections to make ornaments from. Genius. <laughs> and this one was kitted up. It's a bunch of um, classic color works floss and a little bead pack. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. I love this guy right here is my favorite. This little reindeer with the presents. So I love that it's really versatile and you can do it different ways. Um, I'd love to start it this year. I don't know if I want to do the long one or if I just want to do a bunch of ornaments. To be determined. So that was my friend stitch. Finish, fully finish, and haul. All wrapped in one. Uh, and then whips. So other than the stuff I finished, I only have two whips to show. I've been working on my car projects, but they're in the car. Cardinal points. I'm going to be hard pressed to get this done this year. If I want to get this done this year, I think it's going to need more than two days a week because the last few weeks it has not gotten a lot of time on its Monday, Tuesday days. Actually, last Monday I didn't even touch it, so I did it Tuesday, Wednesday. So last time I showed it to you, all opened up and ironed, and now it's all shoved back in the Q-snap. So there is the chart, Cardinal Points. It's by um, Julia Line of Long Dog Samplers, but I think it's published by The Gentle Art. I have this corner left. That's it. So I decided I pulled it over to work on those words, because I had mentioned to you that the words are right where all the pages meet and they're really hard to see. So I thought I would try them and if they were too hard then I would have to chart them out. So, so far so good. So I have the gentle art of A is embodied in and then instead of moving the cue snap to keep going I could reach that center bouquet. So I've been working on this. So I know I did this last time and then last night I got one of the flowers and some of the vines done. There's one more little motif right here. I think I might just finish what I can reach, then just kind of move it over and up a little and do the border and stuff in the cardinal. And then hopefully all that last corner would fit in the Q-snap so that I could um, stitch it all at once. This is stitched on 18 count antique white Ada. Nothing fancy. I really wanted those colors to pop. Uh, I did it on an 18 count because I wanted it a little smaller. <laughs> 18 count is not my count of choice. Um, but I thought I'll do this one on. It was called to be on, I think, a 36 count with one strand of floss. I'm using two strands of floss because that's my preference. So corner points. In case you're wondering, I've yet to uh, get the hair off that bag. She keeps laying on it. It's just going to, now it's on me. It's just going to get more hair on it. <laughs> and then the other piece that I pulled out to work on is the fox. This is by Cottage Garden Sampling. I have mine in one of those clear, the chart's on the back and it's color, so I don't want to crush it. Um, but it's the fox. She just released yesterday the last one in the series, and it's a, it's either a deer or a stag. I don't remember if it has antlers. Um, 
is beautiful. It's really pretty. This entire series has been really pretty and really fun to see what animals she's going to come out with next. So I'm excited to see what she has coming out next year. She also released a new Christmas chart with a Christmas tree in it with like little woodland creatures. That's gorgeous. So here's my fox. When I left him last, he had no tail. I think he might've had this very bottom. So I've been working on the tail. I kind of did the outlines and then there's two colors up the side, the white and then a variegated in the middle. So I'm down to just filling in the variegated right here. And then this top is white and gray. And then I think I have two trees and some snowflakes. This one will be done. I would love to have this done the next time I record because it's really not too, too much, right? It's, it's this, two trees, although those trees take a deceptively long time and a couple snowflakes. I took the cabin off of mine and just put some more snowflakes in there or another tree. I don't even remember. And I'm using a mix of mostly the called for, although I think I picked two coloring cottons for my trees just to give them a little variegation. They're not in this bag, so that'll be fun. <laughs> oh, none of my threads are, so hopefully they're all together. And this is actually the called for color because I had a piece. It is picture and plus picture and plus picture this plus mirage ada i think mine is it's a 14 or a 16. i don't i can't tell it's so dark i can't tell so that's why i've been stitching um we already talked about friend stitch there were a couple of purchases <laughs> not many though and actually i had purchased these before my last video they just came in so one of them was the front stitch box and then the other thing that i bought was um chantel 141 of 141 designs did a mystery i think she called it the mystery make along so she has a shop that does um a lot of the wood finishing boards that are unfinished and then you finish them yourself. Um, I'm not very good at that, so I need some work. But it was a great price. It had 10 ornaments. It was $40 that included shipping and it had 10 blanks in it. And I'm not gonna show you all of them. I will link her below. Um, Chantel does floss tube as well and she did an, an unboxing. So she called it the Mystery Make Along 2022. Um, People are using the hashtag 141 mystery make along to kind of show what they're doing with them. So again, I'm just gonna show, I'll just reach in here, there's, here's four. So a couple of different sized, like Christmas balls, a couple different tag options. So some really, really cute things. And then the other thing I picked up is Chantelle has been showing how she's been finishing things on them. Um, she has like model stitchers that send her in stitching that then she finishes, which is genius because who can stitch that fast, <laughs> right? So that way she has stitching available to finish her pieces. Uh, and what a treat for those stitchers because her finishes are fantastic. So one of the things she showed was she used to paint them this Tim Holtz Distressed Ink. And this is the pack she used. It has black soot, walnut stain, vintage photo, and antique linen. And she just rubbed them on there. My Joann's had this uh, on sale even. So I'm gonna try that. I need a clean space because I'm afraid that I'm gonna get ink all over my hands and then all over my stuff. And I don't want that. <laughs> my son came home the other day from school. He's taking a printmaking class and they must've been doing the actual inking. His hands were pink. <laughs> and he's like, my hands are gonna be pink for a few days. I, I guess I'm just fortunate he didn't pick like blue, but <laughs> they were pink. Uh, that's it. So now I guess we'll move right into giveaways. We're moving right along today. Hopefully I'll remember to edit that video in. <sighs> Giveaways, I have one last call. I had not heard from M. Thomas, who won 
the Halloween house trio from Waxing Moon. So last call, if I haven't heard from you by next week, I'll throw that one back into the giveaway pile. Where do I want these? All right, last video's giveaways were both from Carla at Cobweb Corner. Uh, Carla is, I believe, back from farming. I know the shop is open. I believe she's back from farming. Um, she was helping her and her husband go help some of their friends. Soybeans and corn, I think. I like dry corn, I think. So these were the last ones. Give thanks is Les Williams. And resting stitch face is uh, Hank Kistler. So I've already left a comment on yours, but get back to me and I will get those out to you. Uh, I went to pull my giveaways and realized I ran out from Carla because we've both been so busy and I wasn't paying attention. So I don't have any from Carla this week, but she is back open and I'll put that HD Berry code. So I pulled five things that um, viewers had sent in and I kind of went with a one's winter and then the others are Christmas. I know you won't get them done for this Christmas. You might. I doubt it. So uh, giveaway rules, you have to be 18 so you can legally give me your address. Please don't say the word giveaway and I would appreciate it if you are a subscriber. So just use the numerical number. First up is for you, Teresa Kogut. That's number one. Number two, New York Dreamer, Christmas time. Number three, Little Stitch Girl, Fa La 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 Lane. <laughs> These guys remind me of Weebles. Number four, Jingle All the Way, Not Forgotten Farm. If you're not into Weebles and you want something a little more prim. Uh, and number five, Rudolph and Santa from Twin Peak Primitives. So those are this video's giveaways. That is it. Uh, we have two more weeks of 18th. Yeah, just about two more weeks of October. Um, plans wise, I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna work on Cardinal Points. I wanna finish the Fox. I'm trying to decide what I wanna start in November for turkey related things. I have a little more Thanksgiving finishing to do. I need to finish um, Give Thanks from Autumn Lane. I want that done. That's about it. Stitching at the farm that I'm going to in New Hampshire is the first weekend of November. I have to decide what I'm taking. I'm starting that Live on Little from Plum Street, which is not little. <laughs> it's more, you know, live on massive, will take four years to stitch. But I have everything pulled for it. I bobbinated. Um, I was trying to find some of those little floss boxes, you know, like the little half size ones. Apparently, they're hard to come by because I couldn't find any. So they're just on a ring. There's just a lot of them on the ring. Um, and my fabric is prepped. And I marked my corner to start with a stitch because I had to do massive counting because it's a little tight to fit on a fat quarter. Um, I'm going to start in the bottom left, which is not like me. The bottom left has all the water, and I thought that would be the least amount of counting for a retreat. <laughs> so that's my plan. So thank you very much. Like I said, this tutorial for the trim, chenille, um, will probably go up this weekend. I have a couple more ready to go for you for a little later. And that's about it. Thank you. Enjoy some other Flossy videos. <laughs> Bye.